What's going on everybody and welcome to part three of our deep learning with Python, TensorFlow, and Keras tutorial series. In this video, what we're going to be covering is convolutional neural networks and applying the data set that we worked on building in the last video uh, to a convolutional neural network in hopes that we can get this neural network to classify dogs versus cats. Now first, what we should do is cover quickly how convolutional neural networks work, just to get a, a, some of an intuition of why we use ConvNets with imagery uh, types of data. So uh, well, let me just pull this over from the text-based version. I didn't really want to have to redraw everything again. So in general, you're going to have um, the following steps are going to be taken. You're going to do some convolution and then pooling, and then convolution again and pooling. So let's talk about that. So first of all, the, the idea is convolution is to find you know, some sort of useful thing and then we pool these useful things together um, for the, the combination of convolution and pooling for your convolutional neural network. So the idea of this is like, let's say you take an image and then we convert that image to pixel data. So this is just my you know, bad representation of pixels. But anyways, you, you convert it to grid or after it's been converted to pixels, like this in theory could be a convolution on top of a already, you know, there's already been a few convolution layers. But anyways, the idea is then you have a window, like a convolutional window. In this case, it's a three by three window. And in that window, the convolution is going to attempt to simplify what it finds down to some sort of value. Now, when it does that, the window is going to shift over and do the exact same thing just a bunch of times. So in general, you've got the window, you've got how big of a stride over do you want to take and so on. Now with Keras, you can really just specify the window size and that's it. Um, and like everything else, like someone was asking in the previous, uh, well, the first video about bias. If you want to learn more about the more deeper details of deep learning, uh, go to the practical machine learning tutorial series um, where everything is much more deeply explained because it has to be deeply explained uh, because the way we were writing that was with raw TensorFlow code. So definitely go check that out if you want to see more of the inner workings and, and how things are done. Like for example, as you keep sliding, what happens when you slide over the edge? You know, in most cases, we're probably going to pad it. But then do you want to pad it like or same or all this stuff? So anyways, um, getting back to what, what we're doing here. So it'll produce features. So in general, and then you'll do it many, many times. So it's a way to kind of slowly um, extract features from an image. So convolution, convolution. And let's say the convolution produces a 2, a 1, a 4, and a 3. Now, these aren't, it's not going to look just like that. But just for simplicity's sake, let's say it's a 2, 1, 4, 3. Then let's say you've got a bunch of convolutions, right? This is just a bunch. The next thing that's going to likely happen, you don't have to, but this is pretty common, is to do a pooling layer. So in general, the most common form of pooling is max pooling. So again, let's say you do a max pooling of a 3 by 3 window. Well, all max pooling does is find the max value. So in this window, the maximum value, it's a 4. Then it shifts it over and again and again. So you can see how it, how it worked basically down here. So that's convolution and max pooling. Now, the higher level idea of how this actually works is um, basically it's, it's slowly extracting value from the image. So lower the more initial layers in a convolutional neural network are going to be finding things um, like edges and lines and then as you go um, you're gonna find uh, like maybe maybe squiggles and then maybe you'll find circles and then maybe you'll find uh, squares and then soon you're gonna find I don't know like very small like features so um, for example if you're curious I don't know if this is gonna play some sound it is let me just mute it um, this was a, 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 a deep dream. And what you can see actually going through this is how what a convolutional neural network is kind of, basically a deep dream is going to accentuate what it finds. So these are the initial layers where it just finds a bunch of straight lines. And then as you go a little, little deeper, you start finding um, slight curvatures in lines. And then as you continue on, uh, you'll find hopefully something different. Yeah, so like you get kind of more square shapes right and then as you continue along we start getting like faces and eyes stuff like that as we continue even further you start getting like you can almost recognize a dog there um, 
And then as you get further and further in the network, you start seeing things like scales and stuff. Like this was trained on, um, like, uh, what was it? Pet, not pets. I'm trying to think of the term. Um, but this was off of, I'm trying to think it was the image. I think it was the ImageNet data set. Anyways, this was Inception off of the ImageNet data set. But anyway, you can check out A Deep Dream of a Neural Network if you want. Also, you could check out the uh, that series, the Unconventional Neural Network series, uh, for more on uh, more interesting projects like that. So, okay, so the first thing that we want to do uh, is bring in um, TensorFlow and all the things that we need to make a convolutional neural network. So, we're going to imp not do that. We're going to uh, import TensorFlow as TF. We're going to say from TensorFlow.Keras.Datasets. Um, actually, we don't need to import any datasets. Just kidding. Uh, what we're going to do first is bring in um, from TensorFlow.Keras.Models. We're going to import sequential because we're going to use that sequential model. Then from tensorflow.keras.layers, we're going to import dense, so your typical dense layer. Um, we're going to import dropout. We're going to import activation. Um, and so first of all, we're going to import the, uh, the dense layer because a lot of times you're going to end um, either a recurrent net or a conv net with a final dense, uh, just fully connected layer. And then also flatten, and we're going to use flatten before we feed it through that final dense layer. Uh, then we also want to bring in uh, conv2d, capital D, and then max pooling 2d. Okay, so then we're going to import import pickle, pickle. And we're going to do that uh, pickle, or actually, we can just do this. We can say x equals pickle dot load, and we'll load in open x dot pickle, pickle, rb. And then we'll do the same thing for y. So x, x and y. So then... The first thing we want to do before we feed data through a neural network is consider normalizing that data. The easiest way to normalize data is going to be to scale that data. In our case, we're using imagery data, so actually the easiest way to scale the imagery data is we know what the maximum value and the min value is. The min is zero, the max is 255 for pixel data. So we can actually just do that divided by 255. need more T. Um, so, but there is, I think it's keras.utils.normalize, I think it is. Anyways, um, in many cases, you're going to need something more like that. But for now, we can actually just do x equals x divided by 255. Uh, then, once we've done that, um, we can come down and begin building our model. So, uh, we'll start with, uh, not a capital M, model equals sequential because it's just going to be a simple sequential model and then we're going to start using that model.add syntax that we've been using so we're going to say conv2d so we're going to start with that convolutional layer and this can be um we could probably we're probably going to get away with almost anything we pass here i'm going to pass 64 though and then we're going to pass the window that we want to use uh th three by three and then finally, the input underscore shape is going to be equal to the x dot shape. And then here, you can just say one colon. So we're going to skip that first, like negative one. So each, because negative one, again, is, was how many of those feature sets did we have, right? So we don't need that, because that's not actually the input shape. It's going to be the shape of the data we're actually throwing in. So it's not negative one, but it is, you know, 50 by 50 by one. That's true. So... That is how we can get that input shape really dynamically. So uh, once we've done that, uh, the next thing that we're going to do is, uh, I feel like we shouldn't be, OK, whatever. Uh, the next thing that we're going to do is model.add. And we're going to add. Um, so in this case, you. 
So the 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 max pooling again to have so in general convolutional and max pooling are going to go together. So in this case, what we could say is uh, after the convolutional layer, we could pass either an activation or a pooling. Um, I'm going to go with we're going to just do an activation layer. So activation. And the activation we'll go with here is just the same one that we've been using, which is rectified linear. Then we're going to do the pooling. So model.add, uh, well, I'm just going to copy this actually. Copy, paste, max pooling 2D. And then again, here, you're going to specify the pool size. And let's just do a two by two. Okay, so that's our first sort of layer. Now, uh, we can do this again. Uh, and this time we don't need a, an input shape. So now we've got a two by 64 layer convolutional neural network. And then, like I said before, we're gonna pass a final, um, the, you don't have to do this. Again, we, we probably don't even need it for this data set, but just for good measure, model.add will add a final dense layer and that's gonna be a 64 node. Now, before you do that, you have to flatten the data because convolutional is 2D, whereas that dense layer, again, wants a 1D data set. So we're gonna say model.add and then we just throw in a flatten don't forget, whenever you want to do stuff like this, you do have to import that layer. Um, but uh, flatten dent 64, cool. So then now all we need is that output layer. So model.add and we'll add a dense uh, and we'll go with one. And then we need that activation layer or the activation for it. Add, I feel so silly calling that a layer, but they, it is coming from the layers. Um, I'm kind of surprised that we would call activation, for example, a layer, but um, okay, <laughs> that's what we're doing. So anyways, model.add and then activation. I mean, I guess it's one more thing, but in the, in the old ways of doing things, like you would, cause you could also say dense. So like here, you could say dense one, and then you can actually pass activation equals something. So there's a kind of like two ways to do it. So I'm not really sure why they have that in layers, but anyways, activation, um, Someone could correct me if I'm, if I'm wrong, but I, I, I don't really think, like I think if you, start, if you walked around calling the activation function a layer in a neural network, like if you consider this neural network to not, you know, when I look at this, I see one layer, two layer, three layer, and then like the output layer. So really I would say this is three layers. But if you started calling this a one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 layer, I think most people would disagree, but I don't know. They're throwing that in layers. So I don't know if, if that kind of opinion has changed in the ML community or what. Uh, anyways, model.compile. And then we'll do loss, loss equals. And we're going to use categorical. Uh, or actually, we'll use, so you could use categorical. Um, it's dogs and cats, so in this case we can use categorical, or I'm sorry, binary cross entropy. <laughs> wow, how many times am I going to trip over that? But you could use categorical. Uh, and then optimizer, in this case, we're going to go with Adam because that's what we always go with. And then metrics equals um, accuracy. Now, what we want to do is run the fitment. So we're just going to say model.fit x y we can specify the batch size this is how many at a time do we want to pass again we got 25,000 samples you probably don't want to pass one at a time but you also don't really want to pass all at the same time it's generally a good idea to do something between like somewhere in the 20s to maybe 200 usually i find negative results start coming in if i start trying to do like a batch size of like thousands but it depends on the size of your data. So it, it, it's really gonna kind of scale with how big your data is. If you've got like a data set of a billion samples, you could probably get away with a batch size of a few thousand. But anyways, um, yeah, so model.fit, batch size, we'll talk more on that in, a little, uh, in the next tutorial. So anyways, uh, validation split, this is the kind of out of sample data. Um, we're, gonna say, we're gonna save 30%, and in fact, that's a pretty high. <laughs> Let's not do 30%. Let's just do 10%. Um, so model that fit 10% and great. So let's, uh, let's train the model. Make sure we don't hit an error. 
We did. X. Uh, looks like a lowercase uh, x. We need to uppercase the x. I knew I felt weird there. Let's see. One require uh, kernel size. Do. Oh, okay. Now I know what I've done. <laughs> I knew I felt like I was like, wait, something is wrong here. So I closed off with this 64 and we need to put it here. So, so I always get confused with, why are you doing that? I always get confused when it comes time to do parentheses while I'm doing tutorials. So let me just space everything out real nicely. So this is the conv layer, right? It's 64 units followed by the next parameter, which is the, the window size, followed by the next parameter, which is the input shape. Okay. Oh my gosh, how many? <laughs> oh, and we did it because we copy and pasted. Got it. Checkity check. Please no more errors, that'd be really nice. <laughs> All right, so I think we're training finally. Yes, all right, so we're already at 64, 65. We're doing pretty good. I don't know if we set, oh, we didn't specify epochs. So let's go ahead and specify. So even after one, we got a 73% validation accuracy, which is pretty good. So let's go ahead and pass in one more epochs equals three. Let's do it a, a few more epochs of this data. Even better than the last one. Okay, so that's looking pretty good. We are up to 74, 78. Looks like we're gonna maybe breach 80, we'll see. No, not yet. Anyway, but if we kept training this probably for like 10 epochs or something like that, um, and in fact, I'll plug in 10 for the rest of my, my talking here. Um, chances are we'll probably breach 80, which is pretty good because that means we're classifying cats and dogs pretty darn accurately. So, um, in the next tutorial, what we're going to talk about is, okay, how do we read these numbers? Like, what is, you know, how do we actually read loss? How do we measure, you know, how do we, like, read the accuracy? And especially, like, what about accuracy versus validation accuracy? Like, in this case, this is kind of wonky. Uh, we got a better validation accuracy over accuracy. It's kind of weird. And we did it again. Uh, this is the first time we didn't. So I'll talk about like little stuff like that that should be kind of red flags. At least initially, it's not that big of a deal. But if your model consistently does that, that's a problem. Um, so we'll talk about some of the patterns that you should start seeing and that you should watch out for as you begin to train models. So anyways, that's all for now. Uh, if you've got questions, comments, concerns, whatever, Ever, you can feel free to leave them below. If you like this content, you can support the content by clicking on that beautiful join button right down there. If you join, it helps support me and the channel. Um, also, you get various perks like a little badge next to your name. You also get early access to videos uh, just like this one. And also, shout out from time to time when people um, uh, join. Uh, so my most recent member is Tejas. Thank you very much for your support, good sir. Uh, you help support my mug addiction. Okay, so that's it for now. In the next tutorial, we're going to be talking all about TensorBoard, which is absolutely essential for uh, training models and, and just kind of analyzing them as they go. It's super, super useful. So anyways, uh, that's what we're going to be talking about in the next tutorial. I will see you there.